Welcome to the topic where we look at examination of the neck and upper limb in more detail. This is the structure of your approach to examining patients with the neck and limb pain, neck and, neck and arm pain. And uh, we're going to go through one in, in, in turn and uh, we'll run through an examination, a live examination, where we'll just reinforce the way to examine these patients. And again, I must state, this is not the only way. This is a way. This works for me. It en encompasses most of the important aspects. Um, so use this as your structure and tailor it to meet your needs. So start off with the inspection of your patient. Have a look at them in general. Uh, have them exposed. We, a lot of people forget to expose your patients. So get their, get their shirts off. Um, uh, look for a, you're looking for asymmetry to start with. Uh, assessing for winging of the scapula, you might want to look at them from the front and behind, of course. Um, winging can signify serratus anterior weakness, and um, there are a number of differentials uh, for the cause of that. Some of them specific and quite um, serious. Uh, you've got that in your reading. You've got that in your reading package. And then, as we've briefly discussed beforehand, while looking at your patients, get them to move their body, get them to move their neck, get them to move their shoulders and upper limbs. You're trying to assess how painful movements are and what restrictions they have before you get on to passively moving them. So you're trying to build up that rapport with your patients. You don't want to hurt them. Um, and then palpation, you're going to palpate them, uh, the musculoskeletal system from posterior aspect and then from the anterior aspect, and we'll run through that as well, getting you, in, getting you focused on having a seamless uh, way of examining your patients. Then you'll move on to the movement of your patients, so then passively and actively moving your patients, and passively, as we've discussed beforehand, is going to be the range of movement. Now we're dealing with neck, shoulders, and upper limbs. Um, and then moving on to active um, assessment of power. Reflexes, coordination, sensation, just like we've previously discussed. And then moving on to specific nerves, radial, median, and ulnar nerves, and then, and then examination of the shoulder in more detail. And we'll spend a bit of time on that because it took me a long time to get my head around examination of the shoulder. So inspection, and as you can see, Paul's got a, uh, a drooping right shoulder. He's got some muscle wasting on that side as well. So there's something going on there. No winging of the scapula. And now we'll get him to do some movements for us so we can get a feel for what's going on. So he's doing all the moving now. I'm gently touching his head just to point him in the right direction, so to speak. And he looks a bit stiff looking to the right. And he certainly is a bit stiff on that side. And he's got some degeneration, degenerative changes. So looking at movements of the shoulder now, both look the same through abduction. Looking at the left shoulder, we're going to get them to do internal and external rotation. That looks okay. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Excuse me, and as you can see, he's got a stiff shoulder. There's some crepitus in there as well. Um, limited internal and external rotation. Some osteoarthritis. External rotation and um, abduction. On the left side, we do the right side. External rotation, abduction looks okay. And then adduction and internal rotation. So these are complex movements of the shoulder and limited on the right-hand side because of osteoarthritis. Now let's move on to the palpation part of the musculoskeletal system. So now you're starting to touch your patients. So remembering um, you're looking for red flags. So you're looking at the, you're, you're touching the spinous processes. You're feeling for any steps and deformities, any local tenderness. Is there an infection that you've missed or a fracture? So spinous processes, facet joints, you're trying to reproduce the pain. You started at the occiput. Um, and that's an important part of neck and head pain, occipital neuralgia. I've just examined the spinous processes, uh, the spine of the um, scapula. And now I'm moving on to the muscles of the, upper, of the upper limb and neck and shoulder. So 
So supraspinatus, infraspinatus, rhomboids, all the relevant muscles, and you're looking for tender points, trigger points. Now you're doing the same thing anteriorly. You're going to palpate the sternum, sternoclavicular joint. Moving on to the clavicle, seeing if there's any clavicle tenderness. The acromioclavicular joint, the acromion, uh, the cracoacromial arch, the coracoid process. There's a number of del uh, bursae in that area that can cause shoulder pain. Rheumatologists know a lot more about that and are much better at that than we are. Nevertheless, it's good to have a handle on them. And then examination of the humerus and the upper limb musculoskeletal system. Moving on to the uh, strap muscles of the neck, looking for tender trigger points. If you look for it, you'll find it. The pec muscles, you're trying to reproduce the patient's pain. You're trying to find a source of pain. And comparing sides. Now you're going to get the patient, now you're going to passively move your patient very gently, trying to feel for any abnormalities, find the ends of the range of movement. And as you can see again, some asymmetry on the right side, loss of muscle mass. So they are moving on to the shoulder examination, flexion, extension, external and internal rotation. Can I feel any crepitus? I can, examining the right shoulder. You can see it's quite stiff and there's a limited range of movement. It didn't look painful, did it? So moving on to active power. You can assess both in turn or at the same time. So let's look at elbow flexors, C5. Let's look at elbow extensors, C7, so the triceps, wrist extension, C6, so you're screening for power here, finger flexors, C8, and then move on to finger abductors, T1. Okay, let's move on to Sperling's test. So very gently do this, maybe jet downward compression, extension and lateral rotation or flexion. You're trying to close that, that foramen on that, that ipsilateral side and reproduce your patient's pain. Tell them what you're doing. Uh, then let's move on to sensation. Sorry, neurology, so looking at reflexes, coordination and sensation. So assessing reflexes on both sides. You'll note I'm tapping myself and not the patient. Um, patients like that. It's also less painful for them, particularly if it's a painful limb. So you're comparing sides. So biceps, brachioradialis, triceps, then the finger jerks, and assessing for a Hoffman's reflex, any upper, um, upper motor neuron signs. You may not need to do coordination, but we'll go through it here for you. So just um, uh, tapping, rapid alternating movements, both sides, and then nose finger coordination. So you're looking for distidokinesis and pass pointing. Keep the elbow up. Remember, it's for those patients on high doses of um, sedative medications, alcohol, antidepressants, opioids. If you look for it, you'll find it. 
Now you're going to move on to sensation, moving through the various modalities. So get the patient to close their eyes, say yes or no when they can feel something. And you're using your um, American Spinal Injury Association simple dermatomes. Yes, yes, you're hearing a yes, yes on each side. Light touch, uh, cotton, assessing A-beta fibers. The hands should be supinated. You're going through the dermatomes. So C4 clavicle, C5 deltoid area, outer, upper outer, C6 um, outer lower arm, C7 is the big finger. And again, doing both sides. C8 is the an inner aspect of the of the hand. T1 inner aspect of the lower arm. And then T2 inner upper aspect of the of the arm. And you may want to test thoracic dermatomes as well, depending on your patient. So moving on to pinprick, can you feel yes or no? And as you can see, with with practice, it'll come it'll become really quick and easy for you to do. Remembering your testing hypo and hyperesthetic phenomena. You might want to assess cool using an alcohol swab or something metallic. We'll just do proprioception here to remind you to do it. Assessing your dorsal columns. Right, let's move on to the radial nerve. Just want to do a quick screener, wrist extension. You've got it in more detail in your handout, but again, just to remind you to do it, particularly brachial plexus lesions, say for example. Median nerve, thumb, ab thumb abduction, so the pen touch test, can you touch my pen? Um, thumb flexion and thumb opposition as well. Nice quick screener for the median nerve. Then move on to the ulnar nerve, checking for thumb adductors. And you can see they're both adducted there. And if, you, if the, you're unable to adduct your thumb, you actually... Um, you actually flex the thumb, so they bend the thumb. So that was normal. Now the shoulder is a complicated joint. It's, it's taken me a long time to get my head around the shoulder. But um, what I've given you here is a, um, an overview on, of a differential diagnosis for shoulder pain. And this is really useful to have. Uh, if you don't remember all the nitty gritty, just remember the five big headings. So is this pain coming from the joint? or the joint space. So is this local pain? Is this um, peri-joint pain, so periarticular pain? Is this pain from the shoulder coming from a systemic illness, so fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis? Is this a neurological uh, um, cause of pain, so CRPS, post neuralgia, suprascapular nerve injury, for example? Or is this a referred pain? And this is the one that you need to remember, consider. Is there pathology in the lung, the diaphragm, the liver? Is this a cervical de degenerative disc disease process? Is there brachial plexus lesion? And of course, um, it's always about excluding the red flags first or not missing those red flags, should I say. So infections, arthritis, fractures and tumors, uh, sepsis that is. So have, a, have an idea about when you're examining shoulder where the pain is coming from. So good differential diagnosis. And this table is a good place to start. So let's examine the rotator cuff. So this is the empty can test and you're assessing, um, so as you can see there, we're assessing the supraspinatus muscle. Infraspinatus, external rotation, 90% 90 90 of external rotation, you're assessing infraspinatus, you're looking for weakness or pain. Teres minor is difficult to assess, it's only about 10% of external rotation, but what you're seeing is Paul's pulling in with his elbow while pushing out with the distal aspect of his arm, externally rotating but pulling in. It's quite hard to assess. Your physiotherapist colleagues will be excellent at doing that. 
Now assessing subscapularis, there are a couple of ways I've shown you. There's the belly off sign, so can you pull the patient's hand off the belly? Or can the patient push on their belly and actually lift the elbows forward, which you've just seen there? There's Nier's test, impingement, looking for um, impingement in the subacromial area. Or Hawkins' test, looking for internal rotation and pain. I don't always do these. I've done. I've left them here for completeness sake. And then the apprehension test. Right, well that concludes this topic.